Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Sota, we are up to Perek Gimel, Mishnah Gimel, today's Mishnah should be Le'elui Nishmat, Neria ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Veliyahu ben Burchai Yisraelov, Chanabad Meriam, Sason ben Raya, and Yoshua ben Shifra, Menuchatam began Eden, Amen, and Abdi ben Chaim Lechaim, and the Refua Shenemab, Daniel Shalom ben Rosa, Betor Shach, Ole Yisrael. This Mishnah teaches what is done with the scroll, the mincha offering and the water, if the woman changes her mind and decides not to drink the water, or if she admits that she committed adultery. If the scroll has not yet been erased in the water and she says, I will not drink, and certainly if she says, I am defiled, meaning she admits guilt, her scroll is hidden away. In this case, the scroll can no longer be used, so like all sacred writings that are unfit for use, it must be hidden away so that it will not be treated improperly. The Sotas scroll is hidden at the side of the main temple building, as Rashi explains on page 28 in Masechet Sotah. And her mincha offering is scattered on the pile of ashes where disqualified offerings are burned. Once a mincha is sanctified in a service vessel, it has the status of a most holy offering. Koche Kodashim, a most holy offering that is disqualified, must be burned in a special place in the temple courtyard. Therefore, when the Sotaz Mincha becomes disqualified, for example, because she refuses to drink, it too must be burned in that place. Ven Megilatak Shera Lashkot Bas Sota Acheret, her scroll is not fit to be used to prepare water for another Sota to drink, because a Sota scroll must be written specifically for her. If the scroll has already been erased in the water, and then she said, I am defiled, the water is poured out. Although God's name has been erased, and we try to avoid having the name erased for no reason, we do not force her to drink the water. The entire purpose of drinking the bitter water is to resolve the question of whether she committed adultery when she was secluded. Therefore, once she admits her guilt and the question has been resolved, the water does not serve any purpose. Now, even though the water was taken from the Kiyol, like we learned in chapter 2, Mishnah 2, and in this case contains writing of the scroll, including God's name, it is not considered holy, and may therefore be poured out, as Tosfot write on page 28, Mesechet Sota, and in the Mishnah's preceding case, where the writing had not yet been erased in the water, it is certainly poured out. And her mincha offering is scattered on the pile of ashes in the courtyard. However, if the scroll has already been erased in the water and she said, I will not drink, but she does not, she does not admit her guilt, they force her and make her drink against her will. Although she refuses to drink the water, it is possible that she is innocent and is just afraid of the bitter water. Therefore, since the matter of her guilt is unresolved and God's name has already been erased, they force her to drink it so that the name will not have been erased in vain. They do not force her until after they have tried to convince her to drink the water willingly. They attempt to calm her fears by telling her that if she is innocent, it will not harm her. And that is in a Mishnah Gimel. Mishnah Dal describes what the bitter water does to a sota who is indeed guilty of adultery. If she is guilty, she does not have a chance to finish drinking before her face turns pale, her eyes bulge, and she becomes full of veins. Her cheeks swell, making the veins stick out, which gives the appearance of her face being covered with veins, as Rashi explains on page 20 in Mesechet Sota. Now, it is derived from the Torah that a Sota does not break down until after her mincha has been offered, as the Gemara writes on page 20b in Mesechet Sota. Therefore, our Mishnah, which says the symptoms appear when she drinks the water, must follow the view of Rabbi Shimon who holds that the mincha was offered before the drinking like we spoke about in Mishnah 2. According to the sages who ruled that the drinking took place first, the symptoms are delayed until after the mincha is offered. Then when the Kwanim see this happening, they say, Take her out, take her out, so she does not make the courier tameh. This does not refer to the main courtyard because she was standing at the Nikano gate, which is not considered part of the main courtyard. Rather, it refers to the woman's courtyard to which the Nikano gate belongs and the rest of the temple mount. Accordingly, the Tumah mentioned here cannot be the Tumah of a corpse because it is permitted to bring a corpse into the temple mount and the woman's courtyard. The concern is that a sudden fear of death might cause the woman to become an Ida, and an Ida is indeed prohibited to enter these areas. However, not every Sota dies right away. If she has a merit, it delays her death. 
Now the Mishnah is referring to the merit she gains by taking her sons to school to learn Torah, or by encouraging her husband to study Torah. According to others, it refers to the merit of mitzvot she performs, as the Gemara discusses on page 21a in Mesechet Sotah. Yes, zechut Torah shana achat, there is merit that can delay her death for one year. Yes, zechut Torah shte shanim, there is merit that can delay it for two years. Yes, zechut Torah shalosh shanim, and there is merit that can delay it for three years. The greater her merit, the longer her life is extended. Now, Atana draws a lesson from the fact that merit can delay a sota's death. Because of this, Ben Azay says that a man is obligated to teach his daughter Torah. Shem tishte tedasha zechut tolala. So that if she became a, becomes a sota and does not die when she drinks the water, she will understand that the merit delayed her death and she will not mistakenly claim that the water is powerless. In opposing view, Rabbi Yezomer, Rabbi Yezomer says, Anyone who teaches his daughter Torah is that as if he taught her physical intimacy. Now the study of Torah sharpens the mind which can enable a person to think of ways to hide immoral activities. In the case of men though, since they are obligated to study Torah and devote much effort to it, that effort has the power to prevent them from sinning as it says in Kiddushin, page 30b. Now everyone agrees that women must be taught the practical laws that are relevant to them as the Ramah writes in Ebenezer, chapter 246, Halakha 7. Moreover, in modern times when people are less likely to go in the ways of their parents and earlier generations, it is a great mitzvah to teach women the written Torah Tanakh and inspirational texts such as the Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, as the Chavetz Chaim writes in Likutei Halachot 221b. Rabbi Yoshua Omer, Rabbi Yoshua says, Rotsa isha bekav v'tiflut mitisha kabin uprishut. A woman prefers a kav, a kav is a small measure of volume of food and intimacy to nine kavs of food and abstinence. By nature, a woman would rather have a lower standard of living and more intimacy with her husband than a higher standard of living and less intimacy. So Rabbi Yoshua maintains that it is not good to teach her to lie unless she uses it to hide intimate acts that are forbidden, like the commentaries explained earlier. Now the Mishnah cites another teaching by Rabbi Yoshua, who I Omer, he used to say, Chasid Shoteh, a foolish pietist, meaning a person who takes piety to foolish extremes. For example, he does not save a drowning woman for fear that he will gaze at her. The Rasha Arum, a cunning evildoer, a person who deceives people without lying. For example, he presents his side of a case to a judge before the other party arrives. The Torah prohibits a person involved in a dispute to present his argument to the judge before his opponent arrives. As the Torah discusses in several Shemot, Chapter 21, 23, verse 1, with Rashi's commentary. If he does, he might tilt the judge's opinion in his favor, making it harder for the judge to later accept the other side of the story. He is an evildoer because he violated the Torah's commandment, and he is cunning because he made his argument stronger in the eyes of the judge without departing from the truth. Visha Firusha, a saintly woman, a woman who hides sinful behavior under a pretense of saintliness. For example, she secretly uses witchcraft to prevent a woman from giving birth and then releases the woman from her severe pain by lifting the spell, but she claims that it was her prayers that spared the victim, or makot perushin, and the blows of the saintly, meaning one who causes himself to be injured in order to display, sa- display saintliness. For example, he pretends to walk with his eyes closed to avoid looking at women, and he bangs into a wall. Re'elu mechale olam, all of these people are destroyers of the world, because they trick people into thinking that they are pious, when in fact they are not. Their behavior defeats the purpose for which man was created because they use piety, man's highest goal, as a tool for personal gain. It can therefore be said that they destroy the world since the world's survival depends on man's behavior. As the sages said in Avot chapter 1, Mishnah 1, the world stands on three things, Torah, ser- Torah service of God, and acts of kindness. And that is the end of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Amen v'Amen.